humanoids made in Germany and a platform to control them all. Neurorobotics is building an ecosystem of intelligent robots for industry, for service, and for home. Founder David Rieger explains his vision, talks about the tech behind it, and also discusses on what all of this means for automation and mobile robots. So stay with us and let's go and talk to David. Welcome to another episode of the Automation Awakenings podcast. I'm very, very happy to welcome the founder and CEO of Neura Robotics, David Rega, with us today. David, great to have you on the show and great to be in your headquarters today. Thank you for inviting me and uh, thank you for letting me part of uh, being part of that. David, um, Neura is probably one of the hottest uh, names in robotics at the moment. When you look back five years, did you see that coming? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we had no other plans. No, uh, for sure, um, there was, let's say, we had plans to be one of the leading companies. I would not yeah. start a company to, to be just part of something, right. but actually just to win. But uh, for sure, um, like I think you cannot imagine, like in the beginning, you, 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 you can never imagine how, how this feels, how, yeah. how it really looks like. And um, yeah, so and this is what surprised me a lot. But in the same time, um, yeah, for sure, we want to win and we want to stay. Yeah, amazing. How about the humanoids? Um, so one of the hottest topics in the hot area of robotics at the moment. Was that always part of the plan or did it just pop up along the, along the way? Um, for sure, I think in, in robotics, um, humanoids is like the top thing. You know, like like even like already 20, 30 years ago, yeah. I think uh, there was a lot of ideas about humanoids. I did not see it coming as fast. That's that's for sure. Got it. So it was always a plan to make first robots cognitive, and then and then um, and then also get other form factors um, of robots into place. And for sure, one of the big dreams and let's say visions was a humanoid robot. I did not see it like uh, coming in the, like in the six years we mm. are now uh, building the company. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, times like sometimes you have to take the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So, so basically, you always saw it as a big potential, but it really like developed way faster than, than you thought, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this is probably also giving you the confidence to say that by 2030, Neura would like to um, would like to manufacture five million humanoids, right? What makes you what makes you confident about that? Um, um, what makes me confident is basically uh, the markets itself. I know this is also something which uh, the most still doubting, but uh, in my opinion, uh, there is some guarantee for that. And the guarantee is basically uh, the aging population we have. Uh, so okay. we do um, have right now a problem coming um, towards us in a like high speed, and we need to somehow solve it uh, to survive, uh, to keep our somehow economy alive. And in the same mm. time, uh, Germany needs an economic pillar and we need to run yeah. faster. In the same time, I think the biggest guarantee we have is China. I mean, China made uh, their goals for 2030, yeah. which is uh, about, let's say, 5% working labor in intelligent robots, they call. So okay. that's what the whole China understands as humanoid robots. Mm -hmm. And um, translating 5% working labor in China is 40 million uh, oh humanoid robots just for China. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and, and this is also like, so the 5 million sounds pretty ambitious, but it's not like if you're looking into the problem we will face. So mm. we'll have about 100 million less human labor until 2030, just in Europe, China and Japan yeah. together. Um, and that's that's also what we are trying to solve. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a huge market opportunity, actually. But I also guess there is many hurdles still to get to this number in 2030. What do you see as the biggest obstacle for Neura in particular? Uh, the biggest obstacle is like, um, because, I mean, the humanoid robots make no sense without physical AI. And if you're looking into physical AI stage, yes, we had a super fast development in the last six months. Uh, mm -hmm. If you see like, wow, it's accelerating fast. Um, everyone is talking about it. It's a huge hype about it. 
Um, but it still has some hurdles and the hurdles are uh, if you want to have, let's say, the best, uh, let's say, uh, physical AI model, mm -hmm. you need a lot of data uh, to, and this data is not existing, not uh, different from the LLMs like of ChatGPT, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, we just use text data and uh, picture right. data from social media. Um, in, in, the, in the case of physical AI, this data is missing. So it has to be created. And here we have to mm. think a little bit different. So, and this is also the biggest hurdle and I think the limit we have today, uh, which we solve at Neura. Mm. I actually heard that uh, Toyota is working on a behavioral large model. Mm. So exactly what you say, like a large language model, but for behaviors that you could then put onto robots and train them. Yeah. Um, a super, super uh, exciting topic, but uh, I think that would take us too far for today's podcast. So let's stay on the surface here and let's talk a little bit more about um, the use cases that you see humanoids working in. So from your point of view, what will be the first really productive use case where humanoids make a lot of sense? What will they do? Yeah, they will start with simple things. And that's also why we are starting mainly in the industrial space uh, with humanoids. It's mm -hmm. basically to cover 80% of all the um, human labor tasks, uh, you just need to be able to press a button, mm -hmm. uh, turn a switch and maybe handle some object, yeah. uh, let's say into a space and be able to <laughs> place it there. So um, this is basically the issue we want to solve first. Got it. And, uh, but for all kind of different tasks. And, and so and this is also why I'm confident that's something we can do already today. Mm. Okay, so you're gonna focus on industry and industrial jobs right um with your humanoids with humanoids yes with you yeah of, of course uh, we're just talking humanoids today i know you guys have a lot of other intelligent robots in your portfolio but again that would take us too far so um allow us to to focus on the humanoids because they are so exciting um for everyone out there on the market um speaking of markets you already touched that here and there but what are your focus markets mm -hmm. is it europe is it china is it japan and it's always a world market. So for sure, you're starting somewhere and then going. Uh, but for us, the big goal um, is always uh, to serve humanity. And uh, mm. we see humanity everywhere. So they're all humans on this planet. And, and that's also what we're doing, uh, building robots for the world. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you're focusing globally. No, I would say, particular focus market for Neura. Another very interesting question that many investors have, are you planning to go public with the company someday? Um, I, th I think, um, of course, uh, I think that's, that's a way where we believe uh, you could have everyone participating on, mm. on the success story of Neura. I think the story is there, the, um, the purpose we will have like in everyone's life, uh, I think um, it's it's also there. So we, sh I, I do believe that the the right way would be like take this company public. So mm. we do have there also some plans for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, guys. So stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> there might be some really hot stock coming onto the market. But let's leave the stock market for a moment and let's turn towards your product a bit more. Mm. Um, on this year's Automatica, uh, David, you mentioned that Neura is the best humanoid robot in the world at the moment. Um, why? What mm. makes it special? So um, it, 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 I can divide that in two pieces. So I think um, one, why we believe we win and why we are, let's say, different to all the others, because I think we are right now the only company understood that we are the limit. You know, like, so it means mm -hmm. uh, human robotics, you should, like, we, we should bring it as fast as possible into the market. But for that, you still need to solve some issues, like I said, a data issue and some, of like, and uh, training, ro like the, having the skills on the robot. And uh, for that, we are basically the limit. So we learned from Steve Jobs, like how he, uh, let's say, um, uh, solved his issue of yeah. limit. He basically let the whole world contribute to it. And that's actually the way of how Neura does it. Mm -hmm. And there is um, also other big advantage, like this is now, let's say, more on the brain part, which is, in my opinion, the main part of a humanoid. And if you're looking into the humanoid, like the, the hardware itself, uh, even there, I do believe that we are the only one really covering the, let's say, uh, the, let's say, the simulation to, as the, the sim to real gap by mm -hmm. having much more sensors involved like, than anyone else. At the same time, also the gap between human and machine, mm. like and humanoid uh, robot, 
Um, there is also a huge gap if you want to use the data of humans. And uh, to solve that, you need also, again, additional uh, sensors. Um, so, so we had a completely different approach. And, and at the same time, we are in the market already now for some time. So we did not just right. start like last two years or whatever. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are having always the same goal. So and I see here a huge advantage of, let's say, what we operate until now is always arms. Sorry. But mm. if you're looking into a humanoid robot, it's also two arms on a less stable platform, I always call. And uh, <laughs> the, the main, uh, let's yeah. say, value the robot brings is basically on the brain part and the hand part, like how you Correct. manipulate things and whatever. So here, uh, we're having clear advantage of, of, of doing this already. Mm. I mean, all my uh, career life, also the before I started New I started already three other companies yeah. in the robotic space. And um, and we, we, we connected all of them. So... Got because it. Mm, there's, Germany, there's some heritage yeah, exactly, in there. Exactly, because yeah, you, yeah. you're leveraging, like, you're not just dreaming about a, a, a great future of humanoid, but actually using the days of today, uh, already the robots and the data they create um, mm. to generate the future. Mm. And, and this is for sure because we are based in Germany. So here, mm-hmm. you're not just allowed to have visions. You, you, you need to <laughs> uh, prove that your vision has... Like you, you, even the way there you cover with revenues and um, let's say bring enough value uh, right. to the world, and I think here we are also again different uh, to others. Mm. Mm. That's all very very interesting. But if you could sum this up to one sentence, what is different in the mm. Neura approach compared to Figure, Aptronic, Boston mm. Dynamics, yeah. and the others? I think um, basically the sensorization uh, uh, package, like all okay. the robots, the, how the com- whole co- communication protocols and everything we built to stream the huge bandwidth of uh, of data. And at the same time, also the way of how we use, um, how we built a physical AI pod, like in three layers, because that's how humans are also built. And in the same time, um, the the way of how we are not depending just on ourselves, but actually let the whole world contribute on our platform, right. your verse. That's a yeah. big difference from us to others. Right. Right. That's that's very clear. And uh, I now see also the link to Steve Jobs, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, also his, his approach here with... <clears throat> with the app store, with um, uh, letting everyone contribute um, and 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 basically design and build this product on that he envisioned. So, um, well, that's 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 amazing. Um, let's move on to another topic. Um, as you know, we are a logistics automation podcast, so we also talk a lot about mobile robots. Mm-hmm. Question to you, David: Will humanoids replace mobile robots in the future? Or will they coexist? They will coexist for sure. So um, there is, there's, there's also robot arms. They will coexist with robot arms and industrial robots. Uh, it's, it's just they will actually do the task humans are doing until today. So the mm. smarter part and where you need really two arms and uh, things like that. But uh, in the end, even you will see a lot of humanoids on mobile vehicles. Uh, platform because it's much more efficient and more stable and uh, easier to weigh and, and mainly also the whole world is already now designed the way that you can also use them on wheels uh, so um, uh, and this is i think um for sure the coexistence is is there also the right way okay how about um industry labor workers um will they disappear completely or do you think even in the future, we're going to have some some share of human work and then some humanoids, some mobile robots, maybe some drones. Uh, what, what is your vision here? Mm-hmm. I do believe that um, robotics will be able soon able to do um, all tasks uh, a human can do, like, mm-hmm. I mean, physical tasks. Like, yeah. and, and I do believe in the long term, this task will completely go into humanoid robots and uh, but it will be a transition time it's like with the tractors and everything else before mm. we were used to go in the field and we were wondering like how will be your life without going working on the field yeah. and um, and then there was a transition time and today we know without the tractors we would not survive we would not be able to survive on this planet actually that's right. and yeah. not in that mass and we still have too many people hungering and and that's exactly like in the robotic space the same like we will have now transition time so first filling a gap mm. of aging population uh, this is the the first part but yeah. one day it will also uh, let's say uh, be more humanoid robots and 
and then humans. Mm -hmm. and, and this is basically also the time where I do believe um, humans will take over other tasks. Got it. Speaking of tasks and, and humans and humanoids um, working together, I heard that you live with a humanoid at home. What is your experience so far? <laughs> Uh, so it's uh, like I, I don't have a humanoid in, at home. What we uh, we had many times like is the the Mipa platform is on wheels and with mm -hmm. arms, um, and and here the, host, the household uh, robot I think. Uh, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So the household uh, ah, okay. robot, but here also it's mainly for testing purpose for making some nice videos and whatever. So I hope soon it will mm -hmm. be a daily uh, companion in my home. Uh, but still also for that, the, there's a lot of apps required and this is also what we are right now working on and have a lot of partnerships with uh, to get it done as soon as possible. Got it. David, thank you so much for your time. It was incredibly interesting to talk to you. Um, so, well, thank you once again for your time. For all of our listeners, tune in in two weeks for another episode of Automation Awakenings. Until then, take care and goodbye. Take care and goodbye. Thanks for having me here.